न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद विदिंग Hello there. A very good evening, and welcome to another edition of Face to Face, where we keep you up to date and abreast of the latest of political unfoldings here in Sri Lanka. Today, another no confidence motion was brought against the speaker. When I say another no confidence motion, uh, not that no confidence motion was brought against the speaker previously, but there have been several no confidence motions that have been brought in this parliament. Uh, one of the most recent before this was the one against Minister Kehli Rambukwella, then Minister Kehli Rambukwella. Uh, who won the no confidence motion in parliament but was subsequently arrested and is currently in remand custody coming to what happened today no confidence motion was brought against the speaker it was defeated by over 40 votes to discuss these matters and much more uh, we've got today a, a representative from the Samagi Jana Balavegi of course the organizer of the Vatale electorate for the Samagi Jana Balavegi and Nirmal Pereira a very good evening Mr Pereira and welcome to the show good evening sir again yeah. so Thank first you. things first uh, one question that i really must ask you is why does the SJB because uh, since the no confidence motion today was defeated in parliament now the SJB has been taking uh, the forefront in bringing these no confidence motion uh, one against a uh, former uh, minister kehelia rambukwella and and there were several others also brought in parliament uh, during the pendency of the lifespan of this current parliament but many of those no confidence motions were there was very little hope to no hope from the time that it was brought in parliament because how the parliamentary system works or how parliamentary democracy works is if there if the government has more votes if there are more votes in support of the governing faction they win the motion of no confidence so why waste time of parliament by bringing in these motions of no confidence what does the sjb expect to gain from these motions of no confidence uh, shalaga uh, the issue is we have a minority hmm. we are the opposition government won by 135 uh, votes 34 votes at that time the hmm. present president obviously they have been backing him hmm. they are backing him hmm. and he's backing them okay and uh, we just want to expose the corrupt hmm. and the uh, unjust and to get the people to know what is happening in this country hmm. now uh, just by, just because uh, we lost the you no know, confidence motion of kehelia hmm. but now see uh, even the president defended him hmm. the whole cabinet defended him in parliament hmm. and what they had to say at that time but a ordinary person from the from the public hmm. uh, they took uh, kehelia most one of the most powerful ministers of the cabinet to remand president today so hmm. and then not only him all the people who have supported uh, him from these corrupt practices hmm. have been taken in Mm. have been taken in mm. and there there is talk about getting not only the present uh, 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 health minister mm. but the previous ministers mm. of the health and other ministries also mm. be they are going to be taken in by uh, by uh, complaints that will be made in the made in the future mm. so mm. we are giving an opening mm. we open the uh, this main issue of taking ministers and the government mm. uh, getting them remanded getting them found finding them at fault Mm. by uh, by a supreme court decision and who brought this country uh, made you, whose decision made this country bankrupt mm. first of mm. all mm. the supreme court decided mm. it was uh, mahindra rajapaksa former president mm. uh, prime minister then okay. then uh, president uh, president and basil rajapaksa mm. uh, and uh, central bank uh, uh, minister of uh, minister finance ministry secretary mm. uh, and gotab and president gotabay rajapaksa mm. so they have now it is open for the public to take the take their course of action and go to courts and get whatever the remedy they want hmm. because the, there was commissions as far as gas cylinders were uh, ga which uh, made ga by gas cylinders exploding hmm. people hmm. lost their lives yes so, and the, there was a commission that gave the report hmm. the, uh, saying that the the um, gas cylinder uh, the formation of the gas hmm. which was in the cylinder was at fault yes was not uh, regular not safe not good safe the uh, constituent to, gases were not at the proper proportion proper proportion to be kept in the house cut, uh, to just reduce, reduce the, the cost. cost reduce mm. the cost and uh, put public uh, at risk mm. so those people who lost their lives can definitely now go to court mm. and uh, get compensation for the people who have lost their lives or their people who have their relations who have lost their lives mm. so many mm. this opening in our time next uh, in we are in government mm. we would definitely not only uh, have done this so far we would get our uh, lawyers mm. to give free legal advice mm. and get the request the make a system mm. 
mm. uh, where judges can give uh, uh, security to people who are making complaints mm. against such uh, depending on the uh, cl cl depending on the uh, amount of money that they have robbed or stolen mm. or injustice and give them security as well as hear those cases mm. within a time frame mm. where today if, uh, people who know about uh, all these issues uh, don't have money and don't have the time to go to court mm. and they don't have the trust mm. because it takes such a long time. Mm. Certain cases are heard uh, in short time, some takes years. Mm. So therefore, such cases against government servants, uh, politicians, their relations, if there are any cases, we will open to the public de uh, once we come to power mm. and definitely make sure within a time frame of few mm. months mm. and give those people who are going to make a, uh, make a complaint against such cases mm. genuinely. Mm. We look at those case by case mm. and give wherever they need a president's counsel or just the ordinary lawyer, mm. give them and take them to special courts. Mm. Respective previous governments promised all this. Mm. But never happened. Mm. It mm. was not a, not the present leader of the SJB who was the leader of the party at that time. Mm. It, you have to blame it on the people who have been in the, the leaders of those uh, parties at that time. Mm. So today we have a new party, SJB. Mm. Our leader, we are sure this is what he has done. This mm. is what he will do. This is what he is going to how to how he is going to prevent the corruption in the uh, in the future. Mm. Uh, not to cast any uh, uh, adverse aspersions on uh, the leadership of the SJB, but now. The experience that Sri Lankans have is that there are members of the party. Uh, the reality of the situation is that many constitutions of parties across Sri Lanka, be it the SLPP, the SJB, uh, the UNP, uh, maybe even the JJB, the general public haven't really seen these constitutions. And by the looks of it, by the appearance of it, it always seems to be you know, led by one person and the successor of that leader is chosen by that leader himself. Uh, usually, if you take the case of the SLPP or the SLFP, uh, that's, that's been the case uh, ongoing. The UNP had seen that for an extended period of time, and I think uh, we need not speak about that anymore. So nobody has really seen the constitution, per se, of the SJB. But as it stands, the leader is all-powerful. There are certain committees that are advising him. But in the off chance that there is a deviation from whatever plan that the SJB is currently formulating, do you believe that the members of the SJB will have the power to stand up to the leadership of the SJB and say, no, this is wrong, this must not be done? Do you think that the members of the SJB would have that power? Yeah, that's why people voted for the SJB and brought the UNP to, on its knees hmm. uh, to zero. So SJB is party where we have not on the total power on the leader, but on the general secretary of the party. Okay. So therefore, so far we have seen that whatever members have requested have happened. Mm. So speaking a bit about uh, the party constitution and then how these parties really function, now we've seen parties from the north, the TNA, the Ilangi Tamil Arsikacha party, uh, we've seen these parties go into a more democratic framework where they vote for their leaders. Uh, recently, we saw uh, President's Council M. S. Mantiran and uh, another candidate contesting an election, and their leader was voted in. So do you believe that parties should have a similar kind of framework where you vote for your leader, uh, despite who the leader is at the time? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's, what, that's the way the UNP has been before Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh, the present president. Okay. Uh, so it changed? Uh, the general, yeah, we have, we have followed that same principles of the former UNP uh, that have been, um, we uh, vote for the leader every year. Hmm. To bring the so new, so, bring so the, the SJB, so the SJB does have that kind of a democratic framework? Yeah, definitely. Moving on, um, since you brought up uh, the issue of bringing Sri Lanka to its knees and you said uh, there's a Supreme Court decision, um, you know, holding responsible certain high-ranking government members at the time, including former Minister Basil Rajapaksa, recently speaking exclusively to News First, former Minister Basil Rajapaksa said that he believes that the time is nigh for the United National Party, the SJB and the SLPP to unite. What's the kind of response from the SJB to this invitation? That's actually a joke because uh, they bring the government and be keeping people uh, without any food to eat and um, medicine to have for their sicknesses. Hmm. They are, when they are responsible, hmm. why would on uh, why would uh, on earth we we bring uh, join them hmm. when people are given a mandate for us to uh, deliver uh, against corruption and uh, against not with the same people who have been um, responsible for bringing this country on its knees. Hmm. So that's, that's, that's a resounding no from the SJP, is it? Definitely a no. Also, um, 
with the entire you know political or all the political parties in Sri Lanka now uh, gearing up for an election preparing for an election uh, there is always this uh, game of musical chairs where people start you know jumping parties uh, switching allegiances and joining or, or betting for the winning horse as they might see it uh, now we see there are certain people from the outside or from other political parties who have begun to join the SJB as well. And, and the SJB has been receptive of some of these members, including uh, SLPP members like Dilan Pereira, even the chairman of the SLPP himself, GL Pires, is now almost uh, in alliance with the SJB. There are people who don't uh, find this acceptable for the simple reason that uh, the SJB blamed the entire SLPP and their point of view is that accepting members from the SLPP is a no-brainer. You can't really do that. But the SJB has chosen to accept them into the party and will work with them at least, uh, even uh, members like uh, Dr. Nalika Godeheva. Why has the SJB made this decision? No, there are a few members who have uh, not people who have really been corrupt and proved to uh, have been corrupt. Uh, wanted to join the party, and uh, this is a uh, pr uh, proportional representative election mm, that mm, we are mm. we are hoping to go in for. Mm. Uh, let the people decide who is right and who is wrong, and let them uh, bring uh, the people who have uh, a clear record. Mm. So it's up to uh, anybody to come and uh, not each and everybody, mm. but uh, we, we people have their op opinions, views. Some people don't like it. Many people have told me that they are not in favor of bringing anybody at all. Mm. Uh, mm. But uh, some have said, okay, you have to do this uh, in order to break uh, their bone. No? They get <laughs> at least four, 5,000 votes or something like that. Okay. There are some people have different views. Mm. So it's up with the proportion, according to proportional representation. If there was an electoral system, definitely we would have not uh, allowed the broad... You mean like a first-past-the-post system? Yeah, if there was a first-past-the-post, we would have definitely not taken anybody from opposition uh, or anybody, but we would have put one of our uh, candidates with a new, even a new candidate Hmm. Because we know we are where we uh, where we are. Hmm. So, the SJB will continue to be receptive of these people. Is it is it an open door for anyone to come in? Definitely is not open door for anybody to come in. Hmm. They, they, we discuss and then we take the majority decision. Hmm. The working committee, uh, some will object, some hmm. will be in favour. We take the majority decision. Uh, leader takes the majority decision in uh, accepting people from outside. But what happens when members of the SJB itself, um, even? you know, members of the top brass of the SJB itself vehemently object against accepting certain individuals. How do you decide then? Well, the majority of the working committee decides on that. Hmm. So even at their discontent, the majority decision stands? Yeah, that's the way it should be. In the you know, Democratic Party, we should allow the majority to... He may have a private uh, reason for objecting. Hmm. So that's why we get the majority to decide on uh, who should be taken, who should not be taken. Hmm. That's how we, uh, we work. Well, the invitation is still open uh, to members of the SJB and uh, we hear every now and again uh, Minister Harin Fernando saying that, you know, there are a lot of members uh, and also uh, Minister uh, Manushan Anaikara, who were former members of the SJB, saying that there are many members from the SJB who are waiting to join the government, who are waiting to come on board uh, the government's program, whatever it might be, and contest the upcoming election with them. Is this true? This is Maybe some may be wanting to get favours, maybe I may be telling them that they are, they are willing to come. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody in their right senses will want to leave the SJB and join a party that has uh, destroyed the country and the economy. Mm. Is the SJB still open to former members of the SJB, specifically if we want to mention names, Minister Harin Fernando and Minister Marshall Nanaikar, of, of coming back into the SJB? Is it still open for them? If the majority of our working committee decides to take them, I, have, I personally have no objection uh, taking anybody. Because you took over the position of organizer for Wattala after uh, the exodus of uh, Minister Harin Fernando, but there is no bad blood. No, definitely he's a, a, a schoolmate of mine. I had known him before when he joined po politics. Hmm. Uh, I had no issues with him, uh, neither the he have any, he should have any issues with me. He, he left the party, so hmm. therefore after he left the party, I took over uh, uh, Vatal electorate uh, for SJB. But, but, but do you really think that um, when he left the party, because he was such an ardent supporter of uh, 
uh, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, he was one of the people who vehemently objected against uh, President Ranil Vikramasinghe. He was highly critical of him, but all of a sudden, uh, frustration overcame and he completely switched sides. If uh, since you claim to know him so well, what do you think really happened there? Just curious. He, he thought that by joining the government that uh, we'll be able to do a better job. We in the sense the, the SJB. SJB, SJB. Okay. Definitely SJB could have done a better job. Mm. But we will By joining the government? Have taking control of the government. Taking control of the government. Not joining the okay. government by okay. taking by the prime ministership, presidency. Okay. Okay. But presidency was not available at that time to take over to do run the government. Mm. And also we are talking about anti-corruption all the time. Mm. And we will not be able to safeguard uh, any people who have been corrupt. So mm. therefore, it is not, uh, you need 113 votes to run the, uh, run the government, pass mm. a vote. Mm. So mm. therefore, when we are not, we are not receptive to that, mm. how can we expect to run the government and uh, deliver, uh, deliver to the expectations of the people? But, but of course, if, if, if the SJB was receptive of taking the position of presidency, now, uh, there was even opposition leader Sajid Premadasa did not contest uh, for the presidency within parliament during that vote. It was Dala Salah Peruma who contested along with Andhra Kumar Desanayak and, and Ranil Vikramasinghe. So if SJB by no, it chance... Was, it was only a prime minister post, no? It was not the presidency. It was the presidency. The presidency uh, between uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe where the parliament voted, uh, I believe Ranil Vikramasinghe got about 134 votes. Yeah, 134 votes. He got 134 votes. So do you think that uh, at the time if opposition uh, leader Sajid Premadasa came forward, uh, you know, took up the presidency and, and by some miracle somehow uh, secured the required votes in parliament, he could have dissolved parliament, set the record straight. You've been calling for an election for a long time. Do you think there was a possibility? Yeah, the, knowing the people in the parliament, they would have never wa wanted uh, to dissolve the parliament. So mm. obviously the, at that time the uh, issue was to continue, not to dissolve parliament. Mm. So they would have never supported, uh, they would have impeached him following day without <laughs> allowing him to dissolve the parliament. Mm -hmm. So, moving forward, uh, speaking about the election now, the general public are faced with options, quite a few options this time around. So, before I get into the bigger options, uh, let me start by uh, the new political forces that are beginning to spring up, uh, per se, uh, the Mahajanapaksha, where I believe uh, Dilit Jaiwira, a uh, media tycoon in Sri Lanka, is, is leading the party. Uh, there are various other parties that are also uh, popping up every uh, now and again. Um, uh, Damika Pereira has his own movement, if you will. Um, what do you think about the chances that these new political forces have in this turbulent Sri Lanka? Definitely, I don't think people will want to have even consider uh, thinking about them. They may Definitely, I don't think they will even get 1% of the vote, or all of them put together. So mm. there is not a issue to talk about today. They so, they 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 go to go in front of the media. They'll spend a lot of money mm. and they'll think they're a formidable force. But I don't think uh, there'll be any uh, not even one percent. This is my uh, that's a reading. Question. Yes. Uh, also moving forward, uh, the Jatika Jana Balavegia is gaining quite a bit of traction. Um, social media. Uh, they have their rallies being held not only here in Sri Lanka, uh, but in foreign countries as well. What do you think of their recent rise? The recent rise is all they have been uh, planning this for a long, long time. Hmm. They, you see, whenever they, they were formed in uh, 1965, uh, May 14th. Uh, the JVP. JVP, same things, JVP and PP, different election, different names are coming, they are coming with different mm -hmm. symbols. Mm -hmm. Same same people, same, I mean, definitely, it's all the same people who are from then to now, mm -hmm. um, except Vijay Veera. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are, they are hailing their Vijay Veera on that day that he, was, that he died. Mm -hmm. And then they are talking about the wrong decisions of him at that time, mm -hmm. and then calling him the leader. Mm -hmm. So it's the same principle, people should realize that uh, they are, uh, talking about like uh, Prabhakaran and then s condemning him subsequently mm. uh, by, by the same people. Well, of course, I must remind you that you have to take responsibility for all the statements that you make on this show. Yes, of course. <laughs> so, uh, on that day, so, uh, originally then they, they, they fought against the uh, um, uh, economy that was closed by, mm. by Sri Mahabandar mm. uh, Closed economy also, they fought at that time. They, mm. fought, they killed p so many people. They destroyed government properties hmm. and prevent, uh, prevented the people, uh, not the people who have, the people who didn't have only suffered even at that time. 87, 88, 89 insurgency led by the JVP, uh, they destroyed so many assets 
Uh, but, but then the we government. see this we see this whole 89 story coming up every now no, and again. That is because they are the same people. But from that time they were never in power. They were never in power. This was everything this was everything that was done while they were not in power and to get into power they did all this. When was the last um, atrocious act as you see it committed by the JVP? When was the last time such an act was done? Bringing Gotabe Rajapaksa to power. Bringing oh. Gotabe Rajapaksa. Yeah, so you're accusing the JJB of bringing Gotabe Rajapaksa. Obviously, they supported power. Gota, the last, the immediate one was Gotabe Rajapaksa. They contested Rajapaksa. separately. They contested separately, but they supported bringing Gotabe Rajapaksa as a president of this country. That's a serious but, allegation. I course. think they will dispute you on that. No, they, how, they can't because they supported them. <laughs> Quite previously, strongly. Previously, they supported Maitrapala Ma Ma Sirisena being brought. Before that, uh, Sarat Fonseca being brought. Before that, Mahindra Rajapaksa being brought. The SJB Before supported Sarat Fonseca being brought. Yes, <laughs> UNP supported. UNP. UNP supported. supported. You were UNP But they the never time. came to power. <laughs> yes. No, but so that's wrong. Yeah, they, they, they never came to power. But still, you see the economic uh, hardships that people are facing due to the people who, he, who they have brought to power. We, we have been, uh, we are on our knees today. Economy has been destroyed completely. So, so, so the UNP, including your members, including yourself at the time, also supported uh, Sarath Fonseca. No, I, I was uh, contested. I contested on this LPR from two th in 2010. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, yeah. that was back in 2010. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 2005, 2004, they were. I was. Uh, I was in the UNP. I won Putlam district. Hmm. Uh, you, uh, when Mahinda Rajapaksa was the president, elected as the president, hmm. I won the whole district as a district leader. Hmm. But at that time, to, uh, 2005, 2005. Uh, JP contest, uh, supported Mahindra Rajapaksa being yes. brought to power hmm. at that time. Okay. So, but at that time, I was in the in the UNP. I hmm. was uh, against them. Hmm. In 2010, JP was with uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe and uh, and uh, uh, Sarath Fonseca. Hmm. At that time, I was with Mahindra Rajapaksa <laughs> in 2010. Forgive it's me, forgive me, because there are so <laughs> many so many people changing heads that it's very hard to keep yeah. track of. 2007, <laughs> okay. uh, with Karu Jayasuri and 17 of us joined okay. because we wanted uh, to go. To uh, get the uh, emergency extended, mm. as, uh, we wanted the, our party to support the government to extend the emergency. Okay. Where our at leader at, this, at that time didn't want to support the government to extend the emergency. Mm. But we had no choice. In, in the party, we decided 17 of us joined the government to extend emergency. Mm. That was the reason why we, why we went there. Mm. So, to, I have never been part of the JEP. No, my, my, my question I have my never been part of the JEP <laughs> to bring the government to power. My, my question to you was no. Now, you, you referred to the, the atrocious acts in the 18th century. The last atrocious act was including 2000, murders. 2019. Murdered, gas cylinders exploded. I mean, people died on the road. What more? People are dying without uh, these injections, fake fake medicine. These these. So these you're, you're blaming all of that economic, on the JJP. Economic hardships is part of that. Okay. Part of that. You don't have to take a gun and shoot or kill a person with a knife. Okay. We are all suffering today. No food to eat, no medicine, no mm. standard of anything in mm. this country today. So we're in the final few minutes of the show, and, and I'd like to pick your brain on on what really the SJB SJB's priorities would be at the upcoming elections. We've always seen a certain slogan, you know, taking the prime spot in the election campaign. Back in 2015, it was, you know, good governance, anti-corruption. 2019, it was national security, safe country for everyone. I think in Singhala, they used to say, uh, you know, Khanna Netat in Naratak. We finally got that. Um, so what are the priorities of the SJB this time around? Basically, today what we are missing in this country is the confidence. Confidence, confidence of the people in, people, in government. People in this country. Confidence of the people in this country, for the country, for everything in this country. Thereby, by investors hmm. or foreign investors, we don't have any confidence in this country. Hmm. For the for the govern, governance in this hmm. country. So, basically, it goes back again to corruption. Hmm. So, we can set examples. How we are going to do it? Maybe it it may not it it it'll sound uh, foolish, mm. but first of all we'll have to start with ourselves. Mm. Who was going to be members of parliament at that time after coming to power? Mm. These are what we are going to promise to once we come to power. What we will do? We'll first have to stop the waste of waste of food that is taking place in the parliament. <laughs> Again, then all the houses that the members and ministers are enjoying are having today in Colombo is a small amount. But these are examples that we have to show to the people because they are with, without two meals. But will that really be done? Do you think It'll that will really done. be done? It will have to be done, definitely. Knowing, knowing Sajid, it should have been done a long Sajid, time ago. Knowing Sajid and uh, his father, the same DNA he has, hmm. 
at least 60 percent of his father's DNA is Savitri. I mean, everybody thought that uh, former President Maithripala Sirisena would, you know, simplify the entire system, live a simple life. But his final decision, one of his final decisions when he chaired uh, the cabinet was to award himself two houses. Uh, Two and joined two houses together. Exactly, and, and that was reversed by a Supreme Court decision. What a shame. What a shame. Do you think this would be the same fate? Like Definitely. People Definitely. Are, that, that's what people expect at least. So I can you, tell you that as a matter of fact. I don't know how to talk about his <laughs> DNA or his father's behavior or family behavior. So that's him. So because that's the general public at the end of the day would be taking your word yeah. for what uh, you know the SJB's policy would be as a whole, and and uh, you know really how much that could rest on uh, the certain uh, traits of a person. I I I am not very sure. But but if the SJB has a strong policy, do you think the SJB has a strong policy, a rock solid policy on these matters that can be implemented once you come into power? The because you can't really trust the traits of a person. I mean, I may be sane today, I may go insane tomorrow. Nobody knows. So, but That's this why SJB have policies. It's, it's a shame that you have to go to a DNA of a person to find out the behavior of a person. Hmm. But if you look at Israel intelligence today, when hmm. they, are, they are doing their uh, training or give, uh, handing over their positions, according to their research, various research uh, hmm. um, options used by DNA. Okay. So, uh, it's it'll take time to, uh, people to explain to <laughs> for me to explain to the people or them to. Oh, definitely, and then uh, that time we don't have on today's show. Yeah. Maybe some other time. Some other time. <laughs> So basically, uh, we have to be examples, and then we have to start from home. Hmm. We have to basically use spend stop spending on food in Parliament going hmm. waste, housing in housing that we are enjoying, hmm. and various things like that. Not uh, salaries are peanuts. Even without salaries, we should be able to work till the till this house is in order, hmm. till the corruption at all the uh, economic uh, the bankruptcy hmm. is uh, out of the way for okay. four for out for four five years. Hmm. We we did not provide housing uh, houses and so much of security for the past presidents. Hmm. Hmm. They let them go and live in Madhivala. Hmm. Let them give, give them adequate security. Hmm. We should not uh, risk any of their people these people's lives. But we should not waste money. Mm. We should prevent money. We should give, get the people to believe that we are we we spend uh, what is necessary, mm. not uh, go in business class. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I remember one time um, Italian um, no, Spanish president coming here, mm. and he travelled uh, in economic class. Mm. We wanted to upgrade him mm. without any fee because mm. he was going in Sri Lanka. He said, "No, I'll sit in the uh, sit in the economic class." Mm. So similarly, we have to humility, humbleness, humbleness. I think that we is that is a trait that is uh, yeah. quite so. Uh, this all is, that the this, people just doesn't expect all from what their we leadership. have in our leader. Mm. All those qualities are there in our leader. We believe if we don't deliver, we will have to go faster than go, go to the left. And I, and, I, and I think that the people have proved it uh, time and time again that they are not going to accommodate any, uh, you know, any antiques like this, uh, extravagant lifestyles. Uh, the people have a lot of hope uh, going into this coming election and uh, whichever party that they vote for, whichever leader they bring into power, uh, there will be much more expectation from that leader, from that party, from that group uh, than there was uh, when the previous leader was elected and we've seen that. We've seen how Sri Lanka has transitioned during the past few years. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Neomar Pereira, organizer for the Samagi Balabegia for the Wath elect electorate, for joining us this evening and, uh, well, clarifying these matters to the general public. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there. Keep watching face-to-face uh, -face as we keep you up to date on the latest unfoldings here in the political arena in Sri Lanka. Because the election is coming up, uh, you have to make an informed choice, and it's our duty to keep you informed. And we will continue to do just that. Thank you, Thank Shalaya. You. Thank you. God bless.